ready? Ready to rock and roll? Is that action? All right. Okay. Yeah. That's right. All right. Helps the move. Go. 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 Hello, everybody. It's Jason Will with Go. 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 This is a real estate podcast, but but we talk about leadership, personal growth, and becoming the best version of yourself. Leadership. Check one two. Check one two. Grow the best version of yourself. Go. 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 This is a real estate podcast. So we are almost literally outside of where Craig Ballantyne's event was. Yeah. You spoke at the event, high energy speaking. Then, of course, everybody wants to talk to you. And, you know, so you got to be a little bit spent. Uh, is, the, is the tank almost empty? No, I, I'm, a, I'm a little tired, but I just love the, like, the service component. And when I'm around people, I feel energized by them. What's going to happen is I'm going to show up like we're going to be done and I'm going to crash so fast, so hard. But yeah. just being with you right now, uh, just, you know, making this making this time happen. I am I'm jazzed to do this. And so whenever I'm with people and with great people like you have great energy, like I just want to I want to I want to share and grow and have impact. So I, I'm I'm feeling top of my game right now. Well, let's let's tell the world who you are. Um, so introduce yourself. So uh, my name is Sharon Trivatsa. I am the CEO of Kingston Lane. But first of all, I'm a husband and a father. I believe that having great family and a great core is what makes you be able to show up and come back and give to the world every day. Like if your tank is empty, you can't show up and give. And I'm very grateful to my family for that. My, my, my wife's fantastic. I have two, two young kids, seven and two and a half. I spend, I spend most of my time thinking about how I can help real estate entrepreneurs grow their business. That is like, I am so obsessed with that. I care so much about that. I spent the last seven years growing a real estate brokerage and 10X in five years and then selling it to Douglas Elliman. I learned that, I just learned the agent business inside out. And I'm just, I'm really, really deeply committed to figuring out how to help real estate agents and brokers and agencies around the world like create just amazing transformations so they can change the financial bloodlines of their family. Like I'm really committed to that. Let's talk about Kingston Lane for a second because I assume after, you know, the Douglas Element deal was completed with Telus Properties that you had a lot of offers. Yep. And you could have done anything and, you know, you could have gone back to the financial industry or Mm -hmm. or done a number of things. So the the real estate industry must have put its hooks in you a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. You know, the interesting part is, so Jason, the the hard part for me was when we were at Telus, I'll give you the the, the toughest thing. When we were at Telus, I realized that a real estate professional has to wear so many hats. And I think as technology has kind of encroached in our world, it is, I wouldn't say it's made our lives easier. I just think it's made our lives more complex that now we have to deal with the old school stuff. We have to deal with the new school stuff. We have to keep uh, on edge about what else is coming in. And the average agent from 25 years ago is struggling to keep up right now. And I think there's an amazing opportunity for us uh, to help that professional still be a great advisor. And what I realized was there's a gap. And the gap is, if you think about the real estate entrepreneur, they have these big desires and dreams. They want to have uncapped income. They want to have extended time with their family. They still want to only work with clients that they want to work with. They want to have an impact in their communities. They don't want to drive too much and they want to have a geographic farm. That's totally cool. So there's desires and dreams. If you work with a coach, a mentor, et cetera, you can transfer those desires and dreams to a goal and a plan. That's really good. And I've seen coaches, mentors, brokers, owners do a really good job of getting desires and dreams to goals and plans. But when you go from goals and plans to results, there seems to be this strange like friction point and they're like i have this goal i have this plan how do i get to a result and seems like there needs to be a lot of systems tools workflows sequences technology psychology scripting and that piece going from a goal to plan to a desired result essentially taking over where coaching ends was really exciting for me because I I am an operator by trade. I love just putting systems and processes in place because I believe that operationalizing success is everything. I always tell people, you can have really crappy mindset, but have great systems and tools and you will make money. You can have an amazing mindset, but no systems and tools, you will not make money. And so that sounds to me like the systems and tools is a really important component of transferring goals and like goals and in, in the plans to action. So I said, how can we build a company, a platform, an organization, an ecosystem that actually take an agent from 
have these goals, have these plans? How can I put systems and processes and workflows and sequences in place that can give them results? And that was the entire vision for Kingston Lane. And when I knew I had actually invested in Kingston Lane three years prior, uh, the team was already in place, and I came in and I shared the idea that that's what I wanted to do. So we took the original vision for what is now Kingston Lane and turned it into what it is and started doing that. Who, who is Tiger Kingston? Is he is he like in a bat cave somewhere with like a bunch of monitors and screens? Like what what is that? Who so, is this person? So ti- so uh, t- Tiger is an acronym actually. Okay. It, it's called it's the Intelligent Growth Enhancing Robot. Tiger is an acronym. It's our artificial intelligence that we have built, and nobody knows that, which is pretty cool. Do we need to edit this part out? No, no, it's totally cool. <laughs> um, and we want to have our team kind of be behind that artificial intelligence as we're building that. Uh, so Tiger Kingston is actually our entire support team. All right, so I wasn't too far off. I just pictured this incredibly technical, maybe even a robot. That was kind of my vision for that. So Kingston Lane, where where does that name of the company come from? So I'll give you a fun story. So uh, a few years ago, I have always wanted to have a really big party in a castle for one of my milestone birthdays that are coming up. And meaning it's a castle in Europe and I wanted to have invite, you know, my close friends and family. It's going to be a blowout. They're just going to come and I'm just going to have an amazing time at this, at this castle. And I, and I have never had, um, birthdays were not big in my family growing up. So I, I can't even remember a birthday party that I've had growing up. I just wanted to have this amazing birthday. I wanted to, you know, honor my parents and my family and, and, and my extended family. So I've been looking for castles across Europe. So I found this castle in Scotland that was on Kingston Lane. And I said, oh, what a cool name. So I bought kingstonlane.com and I just saved it. And then while we were launching the company and we were looking for a brand, I said, hey, before we look for brands outside, let's look at the URLs that I already have and let's see one of these. And the entire team loved Kingston Lane and they built a brand around Kingston Lane. And they, they said, hey, it's, I'm glad this is not like Agent Wizard or something like that. We want, it's a cool name that people will remember. We can have plays on it like Tiger Kingston. Yeah. And uh, it's easy to, it's said the way it's spelt. So it's super easy. Uh, two words are actually cool right now. Right. So it's, you know, you can say, I'm Sharon Trivata <laughs> from Kingston Lane, which is a cool branding Thing. And so a lot of those worked. And we already own the URL, which is the number one problem in, in today's marketplace. So every time I, I wake up and I look at my email or talk to our brand, it, it keeps reminds me of that goal that I had of community and bringing people together and having this big party. So I'm, I'm, I've not had this castle party yet. It's coming up in a couple of years. God, that is a really cool story. I need some cooler stories in my life. <laughs> it's so awesome. Uh, so if I wanted to, uh, th- there are products or maybe there's an evolution of this, but stuff for the single agent. Yep. What about real estate teams? Like yep. if, if I have a real estate team and I want to say, well, listen, I love what you guys are doing. I want to get you connected with my marketing team and, and start utilizing these tools. Is there a way to, to get plugged in for a real estate team? Yeah, totally. So there's a couple of different offerings. They're all by design and they because what we realized was that the real estate agent community around the world has very similar needs. So uh, we actually launched Kingston Lane right out of the gate. Very few companies launch right out of the gate in internationally. So we launched Australia, New Zealand, Canada. We're in 10 countries, right? Thousands of users, 10 countries, and we've been just around 160 days. So in 160 days, we've had a lot of really great traction and that's hit a sweet spot. So you can, you can either be an individual agent we're building a team enterprise version that launches in January, which is gonna be pretty cool, where team members can manage and add and uh, remove uh, users, et cetera. But the entire value, and the reason why we started Kingston Lane was this idea of a, of a product or a service that we launched this week. It's called the Kingston Lane Inner Circle. So I'll give you the promise. The promise is exactly what I shared with you, which is agents need systems, tools, workflows that are done for you. So what we decided to do was we said, the promise is, Jason, we are going to install a piece of revenue generating machinery in your business every 30 days guaranteed. Now, what the heck is a revenue generating machinery? So mm-hmm. I'll give you a simple example. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if you had a buyer masterclass webinar funnel, meaning you have 3,000 buyers that have registered on your IDX website. You've been sending them e-alerts for the last three years. They have completely desensitized to it. Wouldn't it be cool to know if any of them are still active in the market? 
let's put them through a little buyer masterclass. You click one email, they go to a landing page, they register, they go to a buyer masterclass, the masterclass warms them up, the button pops up saying schedule appointment and out pops an appointment. So if you can take 3,000 people, throw them into a funnel and out pops an appointment on the other end, that's pretty cool. But the average agent's not gonna be able to build that. There's no way. Or if they would, it's gonna take a much longer time. So that is just the module that we're building in one month. Every month, we're gonna build a new module like that and just install it and just give it to the agents completely A to Z done. There is, there, there is nothing, my mind. There's nothing in the world like because now, the best part about that is, the, the first question we're gonna ask is, well, can Kingston Lane as a platform support all the, is that the platform and the tools they're using? No, we call it open architecture. We do whatever platform is necessary. So if we need a landing page from WordPress, if we need a email campaign from Active Campaign, whatever it is, we build it all so that the agent doesn't have to do anything. We put the whole thing into, together into a system and we hand the agent the system. Right, and that's just for one month. And the next month we build another system. The next month we build another system. The other question that agents ask is like, well, okay, well, what system are you gonna build next? Well, it's really easy. We have a bunch of ideas, we're gonna share it, we're gonna take a pay, bunch of pain from agents, and we're gonna let our agents in our inner circle vote. They tell us what to build, we build it, we deliver it, we test it, and then we deploy it in their business. Every month, imagine you, your realistic team, every month you get a new system in your business. Guaranteed, done for you. It's fascinating. No one can do this because everybody's in the, you know, training, coaching, building one software system space. I, my goal was how can we get pl goals and plans into results? And if that means using other people's platforms and systems, whatever it takes. I don't want to have, I, want to sell, I don't want to sell a platform anymore. I want to sell a system, a revenue generating piece of machinery to an agent so that they know that they don't have to do it. And the best part is, not only are we gonna give them the system, we're gonna say, hey, if you ever leave and you don't wanna be a part of the program, just, we'll migrate it for you, you can keep it. So there's no golden handcuffs either. It's, I mean, it, it sounds a little too good to be true, Sharon, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, just the, I mean, just the, y'all are putting out so much content, yeah. it's hard to keep up with, but the, even just the emails that come through, with just giving agents, whether it's scripts or a Facebook Live idea to do. I mean, it, it just seems like they're, how are you guys putting out all this content and doing all this stuff? Yeah. I mean, how many, how many folks are a part of this Kingston Lane you know, enterprise? Yeah, so, so there's, um, right now we have 13 people on the team. Um, we, we designed it as a 100% remote culture. So they're, all, they're in, in time zones around the world. And I've never built a company like that before. So it's a cool, interesting challenge. But interestingly, between my partner Steve Olson and I, we probably have enough content for maybe five more years. Everything that you're seeing is original content from Steve or me. And Steve, let's let the audience know about Steve. Steve has a real estate background? Yeah, so Steve, a uh, very cool background. Advertising marketing background. Uh, he has been an agent. He's been a broker, team leader. Uh, he's also he's also one of the top coaches in the Tom Ferry organization. Before he coached the top teams in North America, and uh, he's he's coached in multiple markets. He's been in the Phoenix market. He's been in the Carlsbad market. So he's transferred markets. He's done high end. He's done REO, and he's one of the most gifted people in the actual implementation scripting. Uh, how do you actually kind of get a client from desire? To actual plan. So between Steve and I, from uh, operationalizing everything and then the content perspective, we're just blending the coaching to the execution, which has been like a like just super exciting for us to do. So we have to hold ourselves back on the amount of content we need to give out because a lot of people, like I've talked to different organizations, and they'll say, "Oh, this is a great piece of content. Like we can split this up into five pieces of content." Right? They just take one piece of filler content and say, we can split it. And I go, no, I have enough content for years to come. Give, give them everything. And sometimes I know it, it's a little overwhelming for people because we put out content daily, like the daily action plans every single day. But I want to do that because that shows that we are on the forefront. We're thinking, we're implementing, we're, we're driving. And whether agents are keeping up or not keeping up, I want everybody to know that we're keeping up. Well, then it works. I mean, just like, hey, t do a do an email blast to your all your dead leads saying, you know, are you still interested? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that totally works. Yeah. I mean, we got so we, we we I had every one of the agents on my team do that exercise, and you know, almost everybody 
got a response. Yeah. We have some new agents don't have you know large databases right. yet, but um, and some of them are really big opportunities. Yeah. Uh, so it's really good advice. Yeah. It's really good stuff. But so you got all this content coming from Kingston Lane. But then you also have all this other personal content, like your daily mojo. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, my God, how did you do it? Um, and you're still doing the 5 a.m. club call yeah. every morning, most morning. I know you have yeah. um, a lot of some people helping you with that. Yeah. Are you still supposed to be working less, correct? Yes. Or, I mean, are you are you still able to you know protect your work-life balance? Yeah, I totally can. So I, what I do is, from a content creation perspective, I actually get a lot of joy creating content. It's like my most joyful thing. It helps me think, and I love doing it. So I spend uh, about three and a half hours a week creating content. And what I do with that is I I batch content. So for three and a half hours, I build content for the entire week. And I set it to go out in different different avenues. But batching content has been a really game changer for me. Uh, There's other stuff that I do. I do do podcasts. I do a lot of the other stuff as well uh, on a regular basis. But if I can find a way to batch the content, it, it is super helpful, but I don't let that intrude um, my my kind of my work and work and personal life at all. It's just a part of it's a part of kind of the, my professional world. But if anyone is thinking about, hey, how do I put out all this content? How can I create more content? I would just say it's easier to batch it. So if you sit down for an afternoon and say, I need to write five pieces of email content, you know, three pieces of blog post content, whatever. I have, a, I have a system that I go through. I think about a topic. I generally use the same theme for the week so I can think deeper. And then I, I do three and a half hours of content creation and then set it to go up. It also helps, I would imagine, to be involved in, you You speak, but you also go to a lot of engagements. Yeah. You're in a lot of mastermind groups. Yeah. You're, you have a lot of connections, so you're just a lot of relationships. So you're constantly learning from other people yeah which is feeding your content, you know, creation. It's, I'm sure you get these creative ideas and all these things are going on with all the, the, the stuff around you that you're consuming. Right. So that would kind of be like a plug for agents listening that, you know, are not very learning based. One of the core values of our company, our core values are to learn, earn, give, and serve. Yep. The first one, learn. Right. I don't really see a lot of agents in our organization. I was just texting an agent today and just saying, hey, what are you learning and what are you implementing? But he's one of my top agents, but he wants to go to the next level. And I'm just like, what got you here won't get you there. Mm-hmm. But I just see that to be like this problem in our industry. Yeah. Like they're just not taking the steps with all the content that's out there. I'm in content overload. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I mean, it's not only Kingston Lane and um, you know what you're putting out personally in the 5 a.m. club call, but you know, there's all these different 5 a.m. club calls now for di- different time zones. But you know, it's a time fairy show. It's just, and it's everything. Yeah. Um, it's just so out. That's why I think it's the greatest thing. One of the great things about our industry right now is there's so much information. Why do you think agents aren't utilizing it? Um, I think it's a it's a couple of reasons. Uh, first is uh, exactly very similar to what you're feeling is they're subscribed to a lot of uh, uh, sources, and, and they go to content. They used to go to overload, and now it's uh, also an agent's business is lumpy, right? So suddenly they have three deals in process, and sometimes they have no deals in process, and then they have seven. So when it gets lumpy and the content uh, cadence does not stop. Regardless of whether you have deals or you don't have deals, you're getting those 13 emails that you subscribe to. So some days you're able to read and some days you're not. That's number one. I said there's an overload component. The other is no one's really taught anybody how to implement. I think there's, again, there's a there's a how problem. And that's why like I, I shoot for my content to be one iPhone screen length. I send it to myself. I, I'd love for it to be one iPhone screen length. So I know that agents don't even have to scroll and maybe create a call to action or something after. But we need, we as leaders have a responsibility to support our agents and educate them on how to use the content, which is why the daily action plan emails from Kingston Lane are copy this and paste it in your Facebook. Right. Right? So we're trying to make it really kind of paint by numbers. And either the person, either the person sending the content has to make it paint by numbers or we as leaders have to tell them how to distill that content out. One of those two things have to happen. And I think that is the big part. The third, the piece of advice that I would offer and, and what I like to do is I take my months as themes. And so for, for example, uh, earlier this year, I picked them like it was in June. I, I only listened to Gary Vaynerchuk in June. I, I followed him on all my platforms and I just didn't, I didn't listen to anybody else. He was my go-to for that. Cause I think in, in, in a month of immersion with some, with a, with a, 
call it a results and thought leader, if you will, you can get the theme. You can get how they think about the world. The reason everyone thinks about a piece of content in a very superficial way. Like to me, when I read a piece of content, it's not about the content and what I can do with it. I want to dive into how that person thinks so that I can shift the way I think about the world. If anyone's going to take anything away, I want to, I want to share this topic. And, I, and this topic is very, very, very personal to me. It is everyone wants to be in the, in the business of an improvement offer. And what I mean by that is, oh, uh, improve your sleep, improve your health, improve your lifestyle, improve your GCI, improve, improve, improve. They want it to go from 10 to 20. They want to go from 20 to 40. They want to improve something. And all everyone's looking for that improvement offer. And when you're looking for an improvement offer, you're looking at all everything. And you're like, oh, which one can I use to hack to move the needle a little bit? And b- based on that, you don't do anything. What I like to think about is when I do these deep dives and I say, hey, for the month of October, I'm only doing Jason Will stuff, nothing else. I'm only looking at JWRE. I'm not looking at anything else. That's cool because you, you, like your your big beautiful whiteboard. Like I totally am in love with your whiteboard, right? Like your uh, whiteboard's bigger than my whiteboard. Whiteboards are like I, I love whiteboards. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so like just whiteboard your walls. Walls, oh, yeah. amazing, right? <laughs> so your content, like you've done, you do you do such a good job of putting out very thoughtful, actionable content. Like if I take the month of October and just look at you and listen to all your stuff, read all your posts, all your driving in the car videos, I look at all of that. Yes, I see the content, but what I get to get to see is how does Jason think? That's what's cool because that gives me perspective, that gives me shift, that gives me camaraderie with you. That makes me feel like, okay, what would Jason do? It gives me the shift. It's not an improvement offer anymore. It's a trans, completely something transformational. And that's why I've started taking once a month and just taking one content source and really diving deep. And man, it's done so many cool things for me because I'm able to like, oh, that's the way, if I were Gary Vaynerchuk, I would take one piece of content, I would, rip, you know, I would, I, would, I would move it around into six different channels. Like now it makes me think like him because once you dive deep into somebody, very quickly you can figure out what they're doing. The problem for us is since we have all these coming at us, we, have to, we are forced to organize them as opposed to diving deep into someone's life. So if someone actually said, hey, for the month of December, I'm only gonna listen to Sharon, like you would instantly be able to figure out who I am, what I stand for, what I give, you know, what I care about, and you, you'll be able to instantly emulate the things that come naturally to me. I think that's what we're looking for. That's really good advice. That would just allow the agent to eliminate all the, the noise yeah. around them and just focus on things. It's like I heard somebody the other day at a conference or a seminar, I can't remember where, say, take a, a date for these agents who just are so lost with you know, their own content creation. Just pick a day of the week. Wednesday is my content day. Yeah. And just start there. Yeah. You know, just really, really simplify it. So I got to hear a lot of your story today, you know, coming to the U.S. And, and you know, I'm a, a late bloomer in life. I spent, you know, <laughs> while you were raising $27 million, like I was focused on partying. And so like, <laughs> where, where are you? Where, like I'm 42 and, you know, I, I was telling my wife today at lunch, I was like, I'm kind of in my 20s. And you know, like 42 is like my 22. <laughs> so I, I've got this, you know, I got a lot of time to make up. So um, one of the big realizations I had, you know, today, I'm, I'm very undisciplined. Craig was talking about how he has this at one point in his life, not too long ago, or uh, he was he was going through some hypocritical things where he's telling people to do this. Right. And so, you know, that was one aha I had today. It's like, you know, I I go through periods where I'm up early and I'm I feel great when I get up early and I exercise, but um, I'm undisciplined with how I eat. I'm undisciplined with bedtime and 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 you know early to rise and all those things. So when the opportunity came today, you know, to stroke a check and join um, Craig's mastermind, I was the first person I saw you back there to yeah. put my application in, uh, and really didn't think twice about it, and uh, was actually going to come and talk to you and say, "Hey, is this a good idea? You know, it's a big check," but um, I just it just felt like the right thing to do because it's just so powerful. You can't deny the science or the reality, really, of just who you hang around with is who you become. Your network is your network and net worth and all those things. So how does an agent who, I'm just very fortunate, you know, through the Tom Ferry organization, a lot of the steps that I have made have allowed me to sit in this room with you right now and interview you. But if I'm just an an agent and I'm, I'm 
I'm a year in the business or so, and I don't have a lot of connections and, and master and ability to join a mastermind. I can't afford it, or I don't know the right people. What can I do? So um, I think you hit the nail on the head. That hitting the fastest way to level up is environmental exposure. You just have to upgrade your environment. It is the it is the easiest way because I I'll, I'll give you a very simple example. When um, for a 30 day period, I was working on some health stuff. And I was supposed to, the doctor was like, hey, you can only eat a salad at lunch and it needs to have you know, a grilled chicken breast and olive oil and you need to do this for 30 days. I was like, that sounds so boring. So what I did, <laughs> what I did was I made sure that every day that I needed to eat lunch, I ate with somebody else and I told them, hey, I'd love to go wherever you wanna go, but I'm gonna eat a salad with grilled chicken and olive oil, you pick the place. I pre-made the choice and out of those thir that 30 day period, the only days that I cheated, right, that I fell off the wagon, were the days that I ate by myself. And at the end of that 30 day period, just, that is when it hit me. My environmental exposure, my, just eating lunch with someone else instantly changed the way I ate lunch. I pre-made the choice. And a lot of what we are doing is, and now I just, it's all about environmental exposure. If I needed to, if I need to step into a room, if I need to pay money to step into a room, I pay money to step into a room because the growth is 10X. Because I know that suddenly, I think differently. I had a friend in one of my mastermind groups say, hey, um, after being in this mastermind group for a year, I count differently. And I, I said, what do you mean? He goes, outside everyone is like, hey, I, you know, uh, it's a couple hundred here, a couple hundred there, but you guys are like a couple ten grand here, a couple ten grand there, and now I believe I can do it too, and it's just upgraded the way I think about the world. He's like, you guys count differently, and I never thought about it that way. And it's not a snooty thing to say because I actually believe that uh, we should all talk about money more. Money should be a much more comfortable conversation for all of us to have. I actually believe that money is 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 a great benchmark for, it's a great equalizer. Like we can all do, if you and I had more, we could give more, we could be more, we could create more. But environmental exposure is everything, is everything. So my first suggestion would be if there is a room conference, et cetera, free events, uh, sales meetings. Hey, GWRE sales meeting, like show up, like <laughs> show up. Right. You know, I love, there's a thing, I, when, when we were running TELUS, we used to get, you know, we had 600 agents and I used to run, me and my partner Peter, used to run at least, at least 99% of the meetings. I used to drive 400 miles a week to run these sales meetings because I knew that when I showed up, Right, it was a, it, it, it was like, hey, I drove, I drive 400 miles a week to show up. You can drive three minutes to the office to show up for one hour, right? And then it started creating this thing for environmental exposure, saying, I'm there, I'm going to give, I'm going to share, and then it almost became a, a I, I don't ever want to miss Sean's sales meeting because people would say, oh, I have an inspection at that time. I'm like, you scheduled an inspection at that time. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not. Don't say I have one. Say I scheduled one. Like take responsibility and don't ever do that again. You know, I drove 400 miles to be here. Couldn't you move it to like by an hour? But I think any opportunity to be in the room is really good. There's a, uh, there's this amazing, there's a really cool mastermind called the Closing Table Mastermind. They're starting it in the real estate business. And it, there's a co cool quote. It says, if you're not in the table, if you're not at the table, you're probably on the menu. I thought, I just think that's cool, you know, but environmental exposure is really, really powerful. My second thing is, if you can't get on, if you can't buy your way, like paying for access, if you can't buy your way into stuff, to me, it's the immersion. I would say, hey, I want to connect with everything that, you know, every every piece of content that JBRE puts out for the for the fourth quarter. I'm just going to over-index on that. I'm going to read. I'm going to consume that. Because you're exposed to what you're exposed to, and I don't want to be exposed to anything else. It's an easy way, free way, is to just go deep on one person that you admire. Because one month of exposure to somebody changes things very well. It's, it's like it's virtual mentorship. Correct. And it's it's just out there. I interviewed Glenda before you, as you know, and we were talking about, she's been in the business, first of all, yeah. 26 years. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, over your 26 years, I'm sure you've seen a lot of agents come and go. And, and a lot of those agents probably had the tools to be successful, right. but they just didn't. And I asked her what she thought that the reasoning behind that was, and it was fascinating. She said, and she didn't even, I mean, she, it's like one second it popped out. She goes, those agents thought it was optional. 
Like it was too much was optional. Like it's just, you know, it's just optional whether I want to come in the office or go to the sales meeting or do this or do that. You know, like success is just, they're expecting it to happen. And it's just, oh, it's just optional whether I want to do this or that. And I thought that was fascinating. Awesome. There's, there's a lot of truth yeah. to that, that, you know, you have to show up. Yeah. And it's just funny, the excuses that we make to keep us because there is a gap. You know, Tom Ferry's talking a lot right now about, you know, the gap that exists between, you know, what we, where we are and where we want to go. It's like Craig Ballantyne was talking today about the point A to point B. And, but our, what we're doing is not aligned to get us to, you know, to that point. And if I could figure out, if we can figure out a way to get those agents from point A to point B, there's a heck of a lot of money in it. You know, yeah, and, and there's an easy, there's actually a, a hack, and the hack that I like to use with you know whoever I'm talking to is I call it the conditions of success. The conditions of success are everyone says, oh, I want this result, I want a hundred thousand in GCI, I want time with my family, I want, I want, I want, and I say, great, that's totally cool. When is that true? What needs to be true? for that result to happen, right? Okay, for if you had $100,000, if you made $100,000 in GCI, tell me what is true. Oh, I come into the office three hours a day. Good, that's your condition. Great, what else? I attend every sales meeting. Good, what else? I prospect two hours a day. Good, what else? Um, I get a lot of sleep. Good, what else? I, you know, I work out once every morning. Good, what else? I make, you know, I at least have one open house on the weekends. Awesome, stop. Here are the six things. Those are your conditions for success. I come in the office every day. You know, I, I sit at least one open house, I attend all sales meetings, I call, whatever it may be, right? So we think about the result, but we don't think about the conditions that are pre- present to deliver that result. So I always go to, I appreciate your result, Jason. I, I understand that. What I wanna know is if that result has occurred, what conditions are true for that result to occur? So any coaching, mentoring, like shift changing conversation for anybody across any business around the world, is, especially when I talk to CEOs, brokers, owners is, they say, oh, we want to recruit 100 agents this year. Great, let's assume you've recruited 100 agents this year. What has, like what, are the conditions that exist for you to have recruited under 100 agents? Oh, we have a recruiter. Good. <laughs> oh, we call. We, we do three appointments a day. Good. We have a recruiting pitch. Good. We have a value proposition. Good. Let's start with those. You get a recruiter, get a value proposition. You will get to 100 agents. Like you just. Everyone talks about the result, and then they're like, "Oh, we should backtrack from the result." I'm not. You don't have to backtrack from any result. To me, it is what is present at the day that result has been achieved. That is what you need from a condition. Let's work that condition. So you're not you're not telling people how to get from point A to point B. You're helping them to self discover. Correct. How to get from point A to right. point B. Right. And, and and now when I tell them what to do, they're like, well, Shran told me to do it, and now Shran needs to hold me accountable to it. The accountability thing, in, in my opinion, the accountability thing is, is, is for, it works for some people, it doesn't work for, everybody needs accountability of some sort, but accountability to thrust it upon you is not inspiring. So if I said, hey Jason, if you, if you actually made 14 calls a day for the next 24 days, math tells us that you're gonna get the result that you want, therefore every day I need you to report your numbers to me. Now you're like, well, Sharon told me, none of this is your idea, you're not bought into anything. Right. But if I told you, if you made 180 contacts by July 2013 or 2019, you're going to get this. You're like, oh, if I need to do that, what should I do? Now you're self-discovering the process. And, and then you say, well, Jason, how can I help you with this process? Hey, Sharon, can you hold me accountable? Now you're inviting me to the accountability. The problem with paid accountability is it's being thrust upon you. And that's why it's breaking people. To me, I just provide the conditions, and then when here's the interesting part: when you reach those conditions and the, and you don't get the result, then you just had the wrong conditions. Now, as opposed to thinking, well, Sharon told me to make 14 calls and I didn't get the results, therefore it's Sharon's fault. I hate my coach. I'm out. Right, right, and that's the problem all the time. So our job as leaders, transformational leaders, uh, you know, brokers, owners, managers, is. Can I get you so in tune with what is pre- like the conditions that are present at the time of you achieving your result? Hey, you've lost 30 pounds. You've lost 30 pounds and it is uh, June 2019. What is true on June, two th- on, on June 2000, you know, what is true that month? Oh, I'm working out every day. You're, you're, you're walking through it. Right? You're like, oh, if that is the truth on June. That's what I need. You know that that's what you need to start doing today. Now the accountability becomes totally invited as opposed to thrust upon. And that I think is the very, very big shift that we need to embrace. 
it brought up a, a, a memory from the, the event today where I'm trying to think who said it, whether it was Craig or, or Bedros, but confidence. Yeah. Confidence comes from making promises and keeping promises. Correct. Because I, I mean, I'm telling you, it gets to my wife's nerves how often I hit the snooze button. Like, I'm like, I, it's crazy. Yeah. Whoever was on stage talking about it said, you know, when you hit that snooze button, that's the first promise you're breaking to yourself. Correct. I don't know. It's just, that just, it just triggered my brain. It's like, yeah. there's so much truth to that. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll tell you as, a, as, as my friend and for your friends that are, our friends that are listening, we make a commitment starting today that we do not snooze in our lives ever. It just does not exist. If you want to, if you want to wake up at 745, set the alarm for 745. If you want to wake up at 5.45, set the alarm for 5.45. But you don't get it. There is no snooze option. It does not exist ever, ever. But the joy there is you can wake up at whatever time you want. You choose. Like we shouldn't do that. Oh, I have six snoozes and six minute daisy chains. So 30 minutes, 36 <laughs> minutes later, I'm going to set my alarm. And like we do that. I used to do that. No more. Like no more, because that is exactly right. That's the promise you're keeping to yourself, right? And I will, that is the greatest change that we can we can agree to today that and make that commitment. And I, you know, it's just it's just funny when you come to these immersive events and you hear these things talking, you hear this truth come out, and you start realizing the dialogue you're having with yourself and how you're like, well, I, you know, things are going pretty good for me right now. I deserve to sleep in a few days a week, yeah. you know? I mean, not just the weekends. You know, I, you know, a couple a couple work days I can sleep in, but it's just such a load of crap. It really <laughs> and you just and you part of it is being around all these super successful people and no matter they all get up at different times, but they all get up. It's it's regimented. It's right. routine. Everything's planned out. So that was really, really big for me. All right. So we're, we're running out of time here a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about Momentum University yeah. and your involvement in that. So and let everybody know who's listening that you're going to be keynoting the event. You're going to be doing a VIP mastermind on listing presentation, like yeah. the ultimate listing presentation. Yep. Yep. So this is your ideal listing presentation to take what is the stat is it 90 yeah. something percent yeah, what so it, in the la, in 24 months uh in a 24 month period we went on 248 listing appointments uh cold as in i didn't have any relationship with them uh, the lowest price in that was uh, five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. the highest price was 238 million it was uh, around the lower around the country and uh, New York to all parts of California, uh, and so across all price points, went with across different agents. We won ninety six point five percent of that. Ninety six point five percent, and uh, and it was at over a billion dollars in listings taken. And what I realized was, uh, before every appointment, we prepped with the agent. After every appointment, I took notes. I actually have two hundred and forty eight listing appointments worth of questions that a client has asked. So I have every question that every client has ever asked us written down, everyone, everyone, every single one. So we use that to rebuild what is now what I call the billion dollar listing presentation. Um, in 2000, I, I've been on uh, 91 appointments in, in 2018 and we've won all 91. Wow. So it's a, there's definitely a process and I'm, uh, I haven't shared a lot of that in, uh, I've shared a lot of this in various segments, but I promised you uh, and the team that I'm going to bring the heat and share some really, really powerful tactical stuff for people that are coming to the VIP and it's just going to be handed to them, kind of done for you on a silver platter, stuff they've never heard before that's going to blow their minds. Wow. I, I think that's where we need to stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, thank you so much. This has been great. Of course, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, and, and for those of you who are not signed up for Momentum University, you should come. It's like Jason and the team have put together an insane lineup. I mean, it is it is an insane lineup of speakers. You guys have been planning this for over like, you know, close to two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this over a year ago and it's still six months out. And there's a lot of planning going on to this. I know that how, how well the team is involved. A lot of People that I know are coming to share and, and, and grow in this event. So the commitment to you is, if not anything else, if you don't get insane value, at least from the VIP, let alone the other event being a bonus, um, I will spend time with you personally if you don't get value from that because I can guarantee you the value is going to be insane. So you should sign up for Momentum Universe, the conference right now because uh, and block that time off. And of course, it's in New Orleans. Like, come on, right? You know, I was talking to Glinda uh, earlier and I was like, 
I mean, you totally crushed it on stage today. And I was like, this guy's speaking at our event. I can't, I mean, like, I can't wait to go to the event. I was like, this is totally, uh, I just, I was grateful. It was a moment of gratitude for you, um, you know, signing on to do this because we went to some other people and they were like, no, you're crazy. We don't want to be a part of a failed event. And I remember asking you, I'm like, am I crazy? And you were like, well, why are you doing it? Yeah. And I told you my why behind it, and you're like, well, then I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. So thank you for taking a chance on us and making this commitment to bring so much value. I, I, I just can't wait for April can't get here fast enough it's gonna of 2019. Awesome. All right, Sharon, we've taken enough of your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I want to encourage you to go to MomentumUniversity.com and check out the real estate conference that we're going to be hosting in New Orleans, Louisiana, April 11th and 12th of 2019. This is a real estate conference started by agents for agents. We've got the most incredible lineup of speakers you've ever seen at a real estate educational event. It's going to be awesome. It's also going to be on the backs of the French Quarter Fest. So come make a weekend out of it. Let's collaborate, network, and take our businesses to the next level. Uh, Get your tickets today at MomentumUniversity.com. This show has been paid for and powered by JWRE. Jason Gold Real Estate. You can find Jason, Diana, and the whole JWRE team on the internet and Facebook. Everybody, have a great and productive and happy week.